be seated though. There's trouble. I have tasted of the glory of heaven. Now my faith is rising, Lord, I believe. Sing, I have tasted of the glory of heaven. My faith is rising, Lord, I believe. I have heard of the beauty of Jesus. My faith is a reason, Lord, I believe. Sing, I have tasted of the beauty of Jesus. Now faith is arising, Lord, I believe. Sing, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Oh, Lord. I believe. I believe. One more time, I believe. Of the age to come, now faith is risen. Now faith is risen, Lord, I believe. Yes, I've tasted of the beauty of Jesus. Now faith is risen. Now faith is risen, Lord, I believe. And I have walked in the power of the age to come. Say my faith. My faith is a reason, Lord, I believe. And I've heard of the glory of the kingdom of Jesus. Say my faith is a reason, Lord, I believe. I believe. I believe. Oh, oh, oh. I believe, say, I believe. I, I, I. Now faith is risen. If your faith is risen, get up, let us say, say, I believe, I believe. I believe. I believe. Oh Lord. I believe. I say now faith is a reason, yeah. I believe. I believe. Oh. Hey. I now faith is a reason. In the glory of the age to come, my faith is the reason. My faith is the reason, Lord, I believe. And I've tasted of the promise of the Father fulfilled in my life. My faith is the reason, Lord, I believe. No. 
You must learn the technology of acknowledging when the movements of God have reached you. We don't just sit and receive the word of God and we act like we receive nothing. You know, the good word of God is the promises of God fulfilled. We're living in that age now where the promises of God are being fulfilled. And when you hear the word, you must say, I believe. You see, someone will sow the seed. Another will water. The things that you say after in worship, they are the things that unlock the word. Nobody will ever intercept the revelatory truths of the word of God without actively being engaged in worshiping God for every scripture. That's how I learned the word. I would sit down and, and I never went to a Bible school. And for hours, I don't understand the scripture. Like the scripture she spoke about, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel. You know, there are many things that scripture doesn't explicit state, explicitly state. But then in your, in, your, in your getting up and worshiping God. I mean, I used to worship God just for the word. I don't understand what you are saying. The Bible says that Jesus wept. And I was upset. Why would he weep when he knew he was going to raise Lazarus? Because the obvious thought is that when you lose your friend, you cry. But the Bible didn't say he cried. They said he wept. And I wanted to know that. And I'll look at the scripture and I'll say to it, be lifted up, be everlasting doors. He prompted me. The promptings of the spirit, they drive you to intercept the motions of heaven. You must know that. You give an offering, not the way we do. Because when you put a basket during service and people are giving offerings, it's interruptions. It breaks the flow of the spirit many times. You, you wound tender hearts. But on your own, sitting down, you know that that is my word. That is my word. I've shut down accounts so many times. Because that's how to prosper. I've never, I've not bought a, a car or anything since 1994. We just went into a covenant with God. I'm buying nothing for myself. What you don't provide, I don't need. It's insane people that intercept the kingdom. And there's no luxury at any time people are driving that I have not driven. I've not built a house. I'm going into my 60s very late. Recently, I turned 60 a few years ago. And my, my children came together and said they're building me a house. I said, give me the money. They said, we know you. And they built the house. I've not even moved in yet. It's not my priority. My priority is to disgrace Jesus. I like to do things that will embarrass him. He said in Isaiah, you should, you should go through to the market without money. I told everybody this January, pull out your pockets. And I told them, travel like that through 2023. Because he said it. And I'm daring him. Every day they are changing the flight tickets and everything prices. Many of the times I go to the airport without a ticket. We buy it at the counter. Because I want to know which one is flying. I, I don't... I was going to Ghana. They, they delayed my flight. Is that a delay? From 9 o'clock till 1 a.m. I was in your airport here. One of the flights ran away and left me in Abuja, so I came here. No, do you understand that? Just to go and see these people cost me over a million. Just, just the same day. Because I would do anything to get to his assignment. Because I want to prove it that he's a wicked God. That he doesn't keep his promises. No, no, I'm telling you. Dare. If you are not insane, leave the Jesus business alone. Go home. You are too comfortable. He will never use you. Because you will not be available. And he doesn't work with what is competent. He works with what is available. I told you yesterday, don't let your hand dry. Don't clap for me. I'm not an entertainer. This serious business. I've dedicated my life to this. You don't want to marry me. So don't even think, wow, this guy will be a good guy to marry. No, no, you will die. Because what I bring home is trouble. Every time I see my wife, I tell her sorry. 
I don't have to explain what I'm sorry for because she's gone through a lot. A man who sneaks behind you to go and sacrifice your son is not your friend. Abraham did it. It was when they returned, Sarah knew what they went to do. So if it had worked, only Abraham would come home. I'm not joking. Look at the girl you want to marry again and the guy you want to marry. Because if they are sold out to Jesus, they are the kind of people that in the night when you turn to say, honey, how are you? Just hear yes, That is when your kiss, your desire for a kiss will just disappear. I'm not joking. They are standing amongst us. One of my girls called me. She has four children. The husband is taller than that guy in white and bulkier. And she said to me, Daddy, I said, yes. She said, please beg him for me. I said, what? That every time she closes her eyes, she just thinks of Yemen, Syria, Turkey. <laughs> Can you imagine the kind of place, Yemen? Those are the kind of places a girl is seeing. She has four children. She said, beg him. I have done everything I can for him. He should take care of them. Let me go. Lebanon, Syria. I mean, she's alive. She brought the man to the hotel and told me, just beg him. I've given him the children he needs. All that we have, he can use it to take care of them. Let him just release me to the love of my life. Everybody is not like you. Not everybody in church is worried about a shirt to wear. Honestly. So I've taught you now. You cannot be bereft of the word of God. From now on. Because you know when you read Ephesians chapter 2. What you don't understand. Stand up and talk to the Bible. Tell the Bible. You have no right to close up to me. Lift up your head so you get. You are telling the pages. He said he will give you the secrets of the two lived gates. That's the word of God written within and without. You don't need Bible school. We're the ones that are making people think that they are the end of the world. And then we come back on social media and accuse the ministers of God. They think too much of themselves because you made them Alpha and Omega. He's everywhere. You don't have to rehearse my songs. I mean, my son is there, Chris. He can play the keyboard. But I told him, no, I didn't say so. Let him play. Because he's hungry for something. And I'm here to release something. There is a spirit that doesn't need to be rehearsed, Pimo. That is the spirit that brings the kingdom instanta. Like an Igbo man said. He said it's instanta. Your drumming will be all right if you are playing what you have rehearsed and practiced. But I'm interfacing you with Amadine. I'm interfacing you with Stephen. And I'm causing you to enter into that which is just flowing now from heaven. I can hold a whole service for hours without singing anything practiced. Instant things that you just hear. I don't even need instruments. I'm the master of rhythm. I'm the one in charge. When I want rhythm, I define it. When I don't want it, I misuse it. But in misusing rhythm, I bring you the kingdom of God. You can only give what you have. If you don't have it, you can't give it. This morning I came that you might be plugged into a new system where you own the word. That's the word. Own the world. The word of God. Own it. Satan doesn't like fools. I've discovered. If you go to the Apollos now, people are drinking and smoking. He's not there. He's in church. Why? He himself doesn't like fools. He loves genies. <laughs> Do you understand me? He doesn't have patience with fools. That's why if you go to the hotels... Every little provocation, provocation, they begin to beat themselves because even they cannot stand folly. That's the reason why he's pursuing you. Did you hear me, Lara? That's why he's pursuing you. Nothing will work for you easy because Satan will attack you. He knows if he gives you $500 or 500 naira, he knows that he cannot predict what you will do with it. He knows you. 
Once you see God moving, you can cut that 500 and give God four and tell yourself, I'll manage 100. That's why he doesn't trust you. I'm advising six people this morning, don't go back because what Satan will show you is shiggy. That you tasted the liberty of walking out on him. He can never, ever trust you. There's no peace between you and him. Akko, don't even be tempted to go. Never, look, take your dictionary today. Delete the words. I'm tired. Cut them out. T.L. Osborne did it. He said he took his dictionary and cut out the word de Satan, devil. He cut it with razor blade. Me too, I took my dictionary that day. It was 1994. It was here. My pastor, Frank Lester Sumrall, he will never reverse his car. He doesn't put his car in reverse. He doesn't. If you want the car to reverse, he will walk to the gate and you have to turn the car by yourself and bring it to him. But when he enters, the car must only be forward ever. I'm telling you the things that people did. It's not fun. My pastors are here. I have never called them once to pray for money. I did. We have never ever prayed in this money ministry for money. Never. If anybody tells you that we prayed, it's a lie. My prayer requests don't include the things I need. They don't. You cannot send an ambassador and then expect the ambassador to look for resources. For you to be an ambassador of an embassy, you must already have been provided for. That's my understanding. Yes, That's all. Yes, I'm a lion. Yes, you know? We stroll carelessly yes, and buffalo back away. Yes, Monkeys take off. Other cats disappear. It's an understanding. It's an audacity. Stomp the floor. I'm giving you new feet. I'm not joking, sir. I'm giving you new legs. See, Adam, I don't have nightmares. If you enter my dream, Eva, you are my property. Where is a woman? A masquerade would flog her in the night in her dream. And she will wake up with welts on her skin physically. And we asked her the question, whose dream is it? She said, my dream. Whose masquerade is it? She said, God forbid. She couldn't own a masquerade. He said, but it's your dream. What was he looking for there? I don't waste time. I don't talk to demons. I don't talk to witches and wizards. You, you entered my dream. I own you. So I told her, the day you wake up, change the script. Tell the masquerade, today the story is different. You will be running. I will pursue you. So give me the whip. She said, that's your problem. Every time people bring serious matters, you turn it to play. Me. Do I look like a player? Would I follow Jesus to play? For what? For what? Even Jesus himself knows. I don't follow rubbish. I'm a master of pleasure. I love pleasure. I like playing. So if you see me do something, I'm enjoying it. I've enjoyed daring Christ and see him come out time and again. And one day in her dream, weeks after, she saw the masquerade. Then she heard the voice of pastor. Because if a masquerade can come to your dream, the voice of the spirit can also come. Whose dream is it? Whose masquerade is it? God forbid. I can't own a masquerade. Then she stopped. Continue receiving bulala. So she turned. She said, turn around, face the masquerade. She faced the masquerade. And the masquerade for the first time stopped. She wakes up tired, Lara. Because she's been running throughout the night. 
in her dream and it shows in her physique. And the masquerade stood there like unsure. She said, give me the whip. Today the story changes. I will flog you, you to be running. I like it. Let's all laugh. The way we used to laugh when I'm running, now we'll laugh when you are running. And the masquerade moved forward like threateningly. She took a step forward. The pastor was saying, move forward. Take the whip from his hand. And she took it. She gave him one flog. Pia! Gave him the second one. He started tearing his mask to, to run well. Then she woke up laughing. <laughs> now, that was what provoked her. Said so every time you teach, you start to laugh. And it's eerie. It frightens me. Where did you get it from? I said, when you have a victory in the spirit. Because a lion does not roar unless he has caught a prey. And she came to church office. <laughs> I said, who is laughing like that? People don't laugh like that. And we stepped out with her pastor and we saw her. I said, what happened? She said, I got the victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. That's what she said. People who walk in the spirit cease to be normal. Yeah. They are stupendously stupid. Compound capital fools for Jesus. They have no respect for decorum and order. They live in another code, another world. So lift up your hands. Say, I have tasted of the powers of the age to come. My faith is rising. My faith is rising, Lord, I believe. Say, I have tasted of the powers of the age to come. Now faith is risen. Now faith is rising, Lord, I believe. Say, I believe. I believe. I believe. Is 
full of your glory. Say it. Say it. My liver is full of your glory. Say it. Say it. Say my liver is full of your glory. Say my kidneys are full of your glory. Say my kidney is full of your glory. Yeah. Say my lungs are full of your glory. Say my lungs are full of your glory. Say my bones are full of your glory. I say my bones are full of your glory. That you are holy. Holy, 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 holy. The people say that you are holy. Holy, holy, holy. The children declare that you are holy. Holy, holy, holy. You are holy. Holy, holy, holy. Yes, you are holy. You are not sick in any of those parts and you know someone who is sick stand in the gap for them stand in the gap for the kidney the liver the colon the appendix whatever stand in the gap we are at war take territory you are holy oh lift up your right hand i see horns of light the healing power of Christ in your hands, in your hands. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. God you are the Lord. You are the Lord. God Say you are the Lord. Your glory, say it like you mean it. Yeah, yeah. Lord, you reign forever. You reign forever. Say, I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Say, Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign forever. In power. You reign forever. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Say, Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign forever. In power. You reign forever. Majestic. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Say, you reign. You reign. In the morning. You reign. In the afternoon. You reign. In the night. You reign. In Lagos. You reign. In Abuja. You reign. In Kaduna. In Accra, in Kumasi, in Cameroon, 
Morocco, in Niger, in Soweto, in South Africa, in Angola, over cancer, over Malsa, over fibroid, over barrenness, in my ear, in my eye, in my throat. You reign, yes you reign, yes you reign, in America, in England, in France, in Germany. Say, Lord, you reign, Lord, you reign forever. Let me hear you say here. I worship you. I worship you. Say, Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign forever. Oh, Lord. You reign forever. Oh, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. In my eyes, you reign. You reign. In my ears. In my nose. In my mouth. In my throat. In my head. In my back. In my bones, in my blood, in my legs, in my feet, in my father's house, in my mother's house, in Lagos, Abekuta, Ibadan, Otuko, in Boko, in Bombay, in Jaws, in the morning, in January, in February, in October, in November. In the sea, on the mountain, in the valley, on my keyboard, in the guitar, in my keyboard, in the bass, in my drums, yes you reign, in my school, yes you reign, in my generation, yes you reign, you reign, say Lord you reign, Lord you reign forever. You reign forever. Say, I worship you. Ah, I worship you. Lord, you reign. Lord, you reign forever. In my sister's life. You reign forever. In my brother's life. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Over epilepsy, you reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. Over leprosy. You reign. Over epilepsy in my brain, over seizure, over fibroid, over cancer, over leprosy, over insanity, over barrenness, over blindness, over the blindness. every disease. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Struggling, no shaking, no moving. You reign, 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 Is as well. That 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 thing you call a storm, he treats it like tea in a teacup. He doesn't run from it, he sips it. What you call a storm. From tonight, I came to change you so that your prayer request disappears. You are only a prayer answered. See, I will call on our 
will call this generation And if they will hear, oh, yeah I'll give elaboration And if they will answer me Then I'll make them my nation Hey, have you not been told? Have you not known? Have you not heard? Have you not understood? Yes, uh, I am who I am. I am who I am See, I am Jehovah The great provider I am your shaman Your ebony Israel say I am who I am I am I am I am who I am I am I am I am who 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 I am I am I am I will speak on in a mystery to my people. And I will tell all, I'll talk about my wondrous words. If they will hear. Then I'll make them my people. Say, have you not been told? Have you not been told? Have you not known? Have you not known? Have you not heard? Have you not heard? Have you not understood? Have you not understood? up your hands say I am I am who I am I am who I am <laughs> I am I am who I am I am I am I am yeah. I am who I am say I am I am I am yeah. I am who I am I am I am Jehovah say Jehovah, my great provider, the great, the great provider. I am your shaman. I am your shaman. Your Ebenezer. I, your Ebenezer. I am El Gibor. Say, I am Jehovah, <laughs> the great provider, the great provider. I am your summer, I am your summer, your Ebenezer Israel.
your hands to the King of Kings. No clapping. Lift up holy hands to him. Honor him. Honor him. <laughs> because there is no one holy as the Lord. So honor him. Right here on earth and in the heavens up above. There is no one, no one holy as the Lord. There is no one as holy as the Lord. I say there is no one holy as the Lord. Right here on earth and in the heavens up above. See, there is no one, no one as holy as the Lord. There is no one as holy as the Lord. Let me tell you, in the morning, His mercies I see. And they remain on me until the setting of the sun. Little wonder and the beauty to behold in the eyes of every man. You are the holiest of all. Say in the morning, in the morning his mercies are seen, and they remain on me until the setting of the sun. What a wonder, what a wonder and the beauty, beauty to behold, behold when in the, when eyes, the eyes of every man you are, you are the holiest of all. Say in the morning, in the morning His mercies fall on me, fall on me and they remain, remain till the setting of the sun. Of the sun. Uh -huh. What a wonder, what a wonder and the beauty, beauty to behold, because it is clear for all to see that you are, you are the holiest of all. Yes, it is clear for all to see that you are, you are the holiest of all. Yes, you are, you are the holiest of all. Yes, you are. Mercies His fall on me, fall on me. And, they and they remain till the until setting, the of, the setting sun. of the sun. Oh, what a wonder, what a wonder. And, a and a beauty to behold, because it is clear for all to see. You are, you are the holiest of all. Yes, you are. You are the Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are. Yes, you are. In the morning, your mercies fall on me.
and cancer. He's holier than barrenness. He's holier than the old cold. He's holier than darkness. He's holier than all kings. He's holier than failure. He's holier. He's holier than the speakings of men. He's holier than every plan. He's in a world of his own. He's holier than Tinubu, than Abacha, than Songwolu, than underdevelopment, than the Supreme Court. He's holier than the Senate. He's holier than the nation. generation in precepts you'll have to teach them in the demonstration of the power of the spirit I bless you I just love you don't clap don't not everybody needs it don't clap 
we're bequeathing eternal battles. It's not something to chair about. If we wanted chairs, we'll be in the nightclub. So carry another level of hearing. A weaponized mouth. That's a mouth and a wisdom. Carry it. It's in the midst of your generations. That's what you must do. The task is clear. The time is clearly defined. You will walk in time. He won't leave you behind. Neither will he be too far ahead of you. Unless he takes a turn and you do not see it. Now you are standing there thinking, a prophet should call my name and speak to me. But you see, that's the height of folly. If God didn't want you to partake of the word, he would have spoken it in the closet. So wise people, they open up their spirits like sponges and they soak up everything that God is saying. Because if he speaks to Ahab and Ahab does not perform it, sir, Jehu, who was the security of Ahab, will execute it. Great is the Lord that has called you. He is not restricted to the instruments that he can use. Whoever is willing and available will eat of the good of the land. So learn these principles of the prophetic. Let the atmosphere of the spirit be your study, your forte, the ways of the wind. Don't, don't let even a verse of scripture and the revelation you have of it now be the end of your understanding. It's not your boast. Because tomorrow the Lord is going to wake you up and blow the lead of the bottom of the bucket. And you will see more. So the mastery, mastery of the wind and the protocols of glory, they should be yours. I came to raise a generation today that's so hungry that they will enter into a realm of owning the word, not shining, but owning the word. When you speak the word in the first person, that's what we came to do today. Lord bless you. I want your two hands. Lord bless you. I like the way you held them. Lord bless you. I see him washing, cleansing, just preparing you for what lies ahead. I told you I brought you a gift today, darling. And this is the gift. I came to stare what you are carrying. Another dimension of audacity. I said it to you in the closet, but I say it to you openly. There is no need to control what you have. I don't desire to bring you under in any way not to embarrass you but it is so that people will know the order the new order of what is called the prophetic that's why we declare another level of audacity temerity courage you'll enter into it i've already told you that he's changed your protocol in this meeting i saw it i saw them uncloaking you and then re-cloaking you with something new. The dimensions of God, they are not limited or restricted. Depth after depth, height up upon height. He wants to take us. And he will take you there. So when suddenly you feel like you have lost touch with your old mantle, realize what is being done. A new one is being dropped over you. That's what's going to happen. See, David didn't stay on one level. And you are like a Davida in the spirit. Every day, new songs, new sounds. And he's just looking for an audacious heart that can give expression to it on the earth. Be that one. Quicken your feet. Mount up with wings as an eagle. Loneliness is not a problem. Kiki, loneliness is actually is a place where he brings his own. You can never be used of God if you are jittery and at, at, at unease or you are diseased because of loneliness. So your husband has left you 
And he doesn't come to the bedroom anymore. And he speaks anyhow to you. God is giving you an opportunity for a butterfly to come out. Stop whining. You're not permitting Satan. For when the spirit wants you to rebuke a thing, he will let you know. But when he doesn't say anything, be quiet. Enjoy it. That's the meaning of Solomon. That is a solo man. The master of the lonely place. It's a cocoon. I know it too well. Every day you'll hear, and Jesus withdrew from everyone. And he went there. He was looking for that place. The son of the king, PM, must be a master of the lonely place. For one of the things that, that destroys ministers and their ministry is the agitations that come from when you are lonely, when the wind is not blowing. Then our strategic minds kick into action. And we call it God when he's not there. Thank you for bringing us. We bless you. And we bless your hands. And we bless what you are doing. With this stare and great staring. In the name of Jesus. Stare it. Give it to your wife. Give it to your children. I see potency around you. Virility. Men coming out of you. I see boys loaded with seed. I see it. I see it. Do you see? So place your hands on your eyes. Remove those glasses. Place your hands on your eyes. I bring you to another level of seeing. Seeing. Seeing is not with the eyes, it's with the heart. You will just know that what you see is real and is true. It will start from now. You just see. <laughs> hey! It will trouble the core of your being. It will undo you. You will no more be in control. You won't be in charge. Another level of obedience and submission. See in the name of Jesus with your heart. Everyone touch your heart if you want to see. Don't, don't, don't be standing like illiterates. He's in the house. He doesn't need your permission to come into the house. He doesn't need your permission. I told you that. And I tell you again. I tell you again. See. 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 We brought a cessation of ignorance in your life. You can never be ignorant again. Because what you see, you see with your heart first. See, see, see. That, that which you carry will come out with eyes. Wide open. That see. In Jesus' name. See. Don't worry, calm down. See, see, just see. Just see, see. <laughs> see, <laughs> just see. See, see, baby, see, see. Seeing eyes, Pastor. That's what we bring, seeing eyes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. My brother, come my beg. I saw you at the brink on the shore and I heard the Lord say to compel you to go forward deeper. I, I give you another name today in the spirit, Ezekiel. Every time you match a thousand cubits, you get in deeper, deeper. But very soon the tide will carry you. What started naturally will become spiritual. A flow. <laughs> I love you, man, with all my heart. Ezekiel. 
Ezekiel. <laughs> you know. Don't be a musician, you hear me? Be a worshiper. You hear me? Let the history, the, the history of the dealings of the Holy Spirit in the lives of those who've gone ahead of you, let it be your programmer. Refuse to be a musician. Defy the tide. Be his instrument. But please, please be seated so that it would allow me to gain access to you. Because some of you are in hidden places. I can see your faces in my spirit, but I, I don't know where you are. So when I walk around, you know. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? But it's not. It's not. Because, because like Sarah, you laughed. And you will call the new day laughter. Isaac, you will never forget the day you laughed. Because the things that God does, they look strange. They look funny. That's how he created the heavens and the earth. He just, he just said, Nepa has taken off the light. He said, no. <laughs> light. B. Do you know what it looked like? It was a punch. Boom. And darkness left. And light came. I just knocked you off your beast. That's what happened to Saul of Tarsus at the gates of Damascus. He slapped him and the animal was on the floor. The carrier and the carrier. <laughs> they all went down. And then when both man and beast were on the floor, the Lord spoke and Paul had to ask him, Who art thou, Lord? You know when you own the word, when you can decide that you are waiting for those words to come to pass for eternity. The daughter of Phanuel, you know, theologians, I mean, translators of the Bible, estimate she was 105 years old when she held Jesus. Because there's been an argument. Was she 84 years old or was it that she had been a widow for 84 years. It's estimated she got married at 14 and lived with her husband for seven years. So when he died, she was 21. And for the next 84 years, she was waiting on that word. Oh, I'm happy to tell you, Pimo, your conference is just in time with heaven's agenda. You know, the highest place of operation, Eva, is when your physical emotional dispositions connect with what God is doing. Peter physically was hungry. What he wanted was eba and egusi with goat meat. And they said, we have just put the water to cook the egusi. So he, he went upstairs to sleep estimating that in 40 minutes, the food will be ready. But he did not realize that there was a hunger in the heart of the master at that exact moment. And the hunger was to usher in the Gentiles into the commonwealth of Israel. So from now, you will begin to feel physical anger over a matter. And you will discover that the working out of that anger is the birthing of his original plan. You see, there's a spirit blowing in the air. I'm talking of right now. I say, there's a spirit blowing in the air. And you can catch the vibe if you care. <laughs> a mighty outpouring of the spirit on the earth. Lift up your eyes. You will see what I say. You know, the words that we speak, people see them. Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and I will watch to see what he will say. I mean, he's going to speak, but he said, I will. 
come, come. Don't be afraid of what is yours. Lift up your hands. Totally. Straight up. Don't be afraid of what is yours. It's yours. It's yours. Don't act like a stranger. It's yours. Don't be afraid of it. It's yours by birth, by heritage. Take it. From now. I'm looking for new people to hear me. Some of you have heard me too many times. And there are many who haven't heard. You have no right to keep hearing, hearing, and hearing. When I call for you, you should know by now. It's not about photography. It's not about anything. You should understand the trappings of the spirit. I say, there's a spirit blowing in the air. You can catch the vibe if you care. I see his glory covering the earth. Lift your eyes and you see what I say. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To the Lamb who sits on the throne. Hallelujah. Ha hallelujah. Lift up your eyes. You will see what I say. There's a season of fulfillment come upon all. Every word of his has come to pass. Fear is gone from our hearts. See the courage of God is come. Lift up your eyes. You will see what I say. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> to the Lamb who sits on the throne. Lift up your eyes and I tell you, you can see what we say. Hallelujah to the King of all. Come, 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 come. Bring your head. Bring your head. Just bring your head. Yeah, take it. Just take it. Run in it. It's yours. It's yours. When we cry under the unction of the Spirit, it's not something we want to be pacified of. We don't want you to tell us, oh, no, no, don't cry. No, no, no. Some things have to go and new things are coming. Sometimes the cry is the usher of the new. Without the supernatural and the evidence of it, sir, our teaching will just be vanity. Mere words. But yeah, I said it. Not so you go and kill people and say it was the anger of the Lord that made me to do it. No, no. But I'm just telling you that you will walk with God till you get to a point where you feel like sleeping and then it becomes the message. Ooh. Isaiah, something beat him in his stomach and he shouted, hey! and then he wrote it out. He said, I heard them say in the spirit, howl, and I screamed. And then I asked them, what shall I howl? So it was a scream, but it was a message. So all, all, all flesh is like grass. Like grass. <laughs> One day, I was in pain. And I went to my medical team. They gave me aspirin. They gave me Panadol. They gave me Diclofenac. They gave me all kinds of things. They wanted to kill me. And I got to the church. And I discovered it was not sickness. It was somebody's symptoms the Holy Spirit had put upon me. So from today, you will stand up to worship and you will feel on the left side here a pain and a jerking. And then you will begin to describe it. But you will know it's somebody's pain. The symptoms just came upon you so that you can accurately describe. 
is a word of knowledge. I said it to you and you are, you should drop an offering. Nonsense. Because it's specific to you. I wasn't talking to everyone. If you don't know it, you will just die and you, your train will pass to the next station. We're not all on the same level of ministry. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. Some people walk into your life and you know something has changed. That's all. Something has changed. I was very ill some few months ago, maybe like two years, two and a half years. And then three men visited me. It was one man. He called me. He came in from Ghana. And he told his daughter to tell my daughter, tell pastor I'm coming to see him. He came, one man, but there were three. Then I started to laugh. Abraham sat by the highway and three men came, but it was actually one man. The, the other two didn't talk to Abraham. Only this man spoke. And he told me, Pastor Chris, sit down there. He doesn't normally talk. I, when I go to his church, I'm the one who talks for one week. If I want to stay for two weeks, I talk every day. I counsel everybody that needs counseling, cast out demons, everything that needs to be done. I do it. He comes and joins the church people arranging the chairs. Recently, when I came to you, his son flew in from Kumasi that morning and they delayed my flight for two hours. I started laughing. It was because of my boy. He sat with me and we talked for two hours with Adam. So he sat down and he said to me, his wife had just died and I'd been to, I went to bury her. And he said to my daughter, Sally, sit beside your daddy. And she sat. Then he told us the story of his life and when the sickness began with his wife and how it came to the end. She was so sick and I loved her. And within two weeks, I just felt, you need to go and see mommy. That's what Ghanaians call their mothers, mommy. So I used to call her mommy, just to make her laugh. And then she signaled to the pastor and her son. She said, I, I don't want Pastor Chris to come. I don't want to see him to see me like this. I know he wants to come and pray for me too. Be raised. But I, I don't want to. She knew it was time. So, so I was singing a song. Songs of joy will never decrease. They will never decrease in the house of the Lord. Songs of joy will never decrease but they'll always increase in the house of the lord 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 the shout of praise will never decrease but will always increase. Tell me now. The shouts of joy will never decrease. But will always increase. In the house, in the house. The sons of light will always be free. They will always be free. Tell me where, tell me where. In the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord. The house of the Lord. Say the praise of God will never be lost, but we always increase in the hearts of His own. 
Till the time of the end. Till the end of time. Till Messiah's feet. In the house of the Lord. So I, I recorded it. Crude, crudely. And I sent it to them. I said, okay, play it for mommy. I understand. You know, Oral Roberts heard that Catherine Kuhlman was dying. And he came. Immediately he hit the doorpost of her bedroom. She did like this. I mean, don't, don't pray. Don't say anything. He stood there, couldn't enter the door because she told him. Uh -uh. And then he turned around and left weeping. Because he knew we've lost her. I mean, she's gone to be with her master. And when she passed, there was this strong smell of roses because she had called the particular rose that should be used at her funeral. The whole hospital felt it. Everybody was asking, where is this roses coming? A strong smell, you know, air freshener. <laughs> her daughter is coming home. Your departure is going to be glorious. Don't be afraid of death. Be bothered about fulfilling ministry in the midst of your generations. And David, after he had served his own generations, what did he do? He slept. That's all. So I asked the Lord. It became so bad. I said to him, am I coming home? I don't want to die in England when I have not settled Kaduna. It's my primary call. So I said, if I'm coming home, let me know so I can go home. He didn't answer me. Then I knew I wasn't dying. But you know, these angels of the Lord sat down in my living room. The street is called Cochrane Street. And he said to Sally, sit beside daddy. And he told us the story of the genesis of the sickness. How it started with a headache, with a banging headache. She called it migraine, called it everything until... They said it was stage three, stage four cancer. Then he said to Sally, he said, Sally? She said, sir. He said, daddy will not die. Then I was sitting down with these three angels and I was thinking, okay, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities round about have been destroyed. Why are these angels visiting me? I can't describe the man for you. He's a queer man. Even recently in Accra, his son said to me, we don't understand daddy again because now he travels anyhow. When I heard that he came to, I said, is he a lie? He said, that's how he went to America and went to Minneapolis and arrived at Auntie Kuya's house. Immediately he entered. She started screaming. Because he doesn't travel like that. He doesn't talk like that. He will be here, but he doesn't, you don't hear his voice. Then they stood up. And I remember coming down the stairs with them. And I said, okay, I'm going to see you off to so St. John's Wood Station. This is five minutes walk. And he said, no, 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 no. So I remember, like, I stood with my phone. I was recording these three angels going. <laughs> Ghanaian angels. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? In Ghana. They're so hungry. When you show up, they say, oh, pasta. They want to eat Indomie. They're looking for Indomie. They want to eat it. They say, jollof rice is our own. I say, sis, sis, if you're not a thief. If you marry a wife, do you have to go on the market and say, uh, ID is my wife? Ah, so, we, we don't say it. It's ours. Let every Ghanaian be a liar. Only Nigerians be true. <laughs> Only Nigerians be true. <laughs> if you are not married and you are a boy, a Nigerian boy, just go to Ghana with a net. You'll catch like 300. Help the country. Bring them here. Even if it's a pastor's wife and her name is Debbie, collect her and bring her. 
Or oh, Peron. That's the next person I want to kill. He says he's Edom security man. What, what, what are you securing? <laughs> what does Edom have that you want to secure? And they had to send him as associate. And then the man left. So he told us the stories, told Sally the stories and everything. Things, he filled up the blanks. And he said, you know, Sally, daddy will not die, not from this. I stood up, so I asked the Lord, okay, so what have we been doing in England? Because I'm not enjoying anything. I can't eat this, I can't eat that, I can't drink this, I can't drink that. It was Jimmy Cliff that sang, sitting here in limbo. <laughs> like a bird without a song. Sitting here in limbo. He doesn't want to tell you that he's an unbeliever. <laughs> Meanwhile, everybody here knows. Immediately he entered, the place was stinking. The smell of hell. <laughs> Some of you, them, after service, they will first Google sitting here in limbo, Jimmy Cliff. Before they Google the things you say. I mean, well, I said it because I was telling them about Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, who held Jesus. See, every... C come, come, let me use you. What's your name? Ezekiel. Go and stand there. Face that way. Face that way. Face that way. Now, just stop there. John! That was what John heard on the Isle of Patmos. He said the voice was like the sound of... Many waters. Now, 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 Eva, you spoke, so stand up and stand there. Just there, there, yes. So call his name John. When I shout John, join me. John! So, no, 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 just stand. You also spoke in this meeting, so stand here. So when I call his name, all of you call his name. John! Pimo, come. You were the anchor. So, when, when, when I call his name, you two call his name. John! Sweetheart, it's your ID. Come, 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 quickly, quickly. No, ID, come. You two come. What's your name now? I, I called her now, and she's sitting down. No, you, it sounded like ID. Stand there, you two, you anchor the meeting. Come, come, come on, stand. Come on, stand quickly. So, uh, uh, when I call, everybody call the same name. John! Akko, come, come, you sang. Come on, stand there. And then, when I call the name, call John. Uh, where's that preacher man, the singer? It's that man that sings. The one with his head. Eh? The other guy that leads the team to sing. Where is he? Eh, what is his name now? Eh, so run down here. I saw your head. I'm describing your head. You are refusing. Stand behind him. So all of you, when we shout, shout John. John! John! That is what John heard on the Isle of Patmos. He said it was like the sound of many waters. He heard Sarah's prophecy, Abraham's speakings, Moses' speakings, Elijah, Elisha, Peter. Do you understand me? All the streams of history, they sounded in that one voice. That is what is called Jesus. All the speakings of God in their diversities. You must not leave this conference without your diverse expression of God. This is the season we are standing in, sir. Where all the speakings of God are being fulfilled. When Hamas attacks Israel, it's the fulfillment of God's prophecy. But before Hamas, Boko Haram was attacking us already in the same manner. He said it would be a time of trouble such as never been seen. That's the privilege. You know, sit down guys. Thank you. Listen to me. Yesterday when we finished speaking and I went to the room, he came. And he said to me, the way you spoke, some people will go home thinking there's nothing special about the finishing generation. Because we sounded like 
Oh, the finishing generation is nothing new. Every generation had always felt like what? They are the finishing generation. He said, but no, no, no. This generation, the finishing generation, is peculiar, is unique. It's to them, you say, you are a peculiar people. So I'm exp ex expressing the peculiarity or describing it, sir. <laughs> Do you understand that? What's peculiar about the finishing, the final finishing generation is that in their day, every prophetic speaking of God will be fulfilled. Amen. So, Anna, stand up, man. Anna, take my baby. And she held it. But Edom, if he was Isaiah, he had called it Emmanuel. It will be called God with us. Do you understand that? Adam, who repented, because many of us think Adam didn't repent and didn't recover. He did. He trained the next generation of children, Seth, everybody, Enosh. You understand? He trained them. So, Adam was told his seed or he, the serpent will bruise you your seed's heal, but your seed will what? Crush his head. So when Anna held that baby, she was holding the promises given to Adam, to Isaiah. Do you understand me? To Moses, to everybody. She held it. The word became flesh. That's why she rejoiced. In fact, that stupid man is a Yoruba man, Simeon. Somebody helped somebody, a child, and he began to describe how he will die. That now he can die very well. Is there a well way of dying? It's only Yoruba people that talk like that. Mumbo, but Monlo, you see them going, but they are telling you I'm coming. <laughs> there are many Yoruba people in the Bible. You know that sergeant that led the last 50 to arrest Elijah? He's from Obama Shaw. He left the soldiers, they left, right, left, right. When they reached Elijah, he said, attention. He said, drop your arms. And they dropped their arms. They three steps back and they moved back. Then he came to Elijah. Hey, Baba, Elijah. <laughs> we all know that the king cannot reach you. And we know that. <laughs> but the king is a wicked man. No? But you know, if I don't serve him, we'll die. See, he has Sikira there. If she dies today by your fire, what will her daughter do? The daughter is getting married in two weeks' time. I'm the father of the day. <laughs> so we know the king cannot kill you. Just come with us, spare our lives. The spirit of the Lord told Elijah, follow him. He's a good man. <laughs> Thank you, man. Sit down. Sorry. Don't report me to your husband. But I came, I was telling you to stand up anyhow. <laughs> People, forgive me. I'm rounding up. How many of you believe that? Then you can believe anything. <laughs> Don't come and warn me after service. I'm, I put, look, all my CCTV is on you. You are, you are dead. You are finished. Uche doesn't have a sister again. From today, I'll just finish you. Do you understand that? So she had been a widow for 84 years. But by the time the baby came, she was 105. She got married at 14. That's an old Jewish bride. Jews marry around 12. They are like Muslims. <laughs> it was from her I learned the office of a widow. Because I used to be terrorized by widows. Widows are terrorists. They use scripture to terrify every pastor. One widow came to my house, Ghanaian widow. <laughs> For real, she was living in Kaduna. Her daughter was in church. She was not in church with us. But because her daughter was in church, she's my member to take care of. That means she was my member only for me to pay her bills. She would come and say, Pastor, Nepa, 
is 3,000. And me too, I know I can't give exactly three. So I must make it five. So she can have extra two. Do you understand what I'm saying? So one day she walks into my office and I hear her from outside shouting, is pasta in? <laughs> and anger rose up in my insides. Well, what she needs, maybe like 20, 30, 40,000, never more. And if I can handle it, I can handle it. But that day, something in me didn't want to handle it. And I'd known the move of the spirit. So she walked in, and the first thing she said just blew my head off. Ha, ah, look at you. Your mother is hungry, and you are sitting down here, and you are relaxed. You didn't even pick it in the spirit. The Bible said that you pastors, you should be taking care of widows. And I am dying and you are not doing anything about it. And you are relaxed in your chair with air condition blowing. Then she pulled the chair and sat down. <laughs> so I said to her, excuse me, stand up. I said to her, stand up. And she said, me? I said, yes. The script was about to change. The masquerade. It's my masquerade. So I said to her, how old are you? She said, I am 53. I said to her, I'm older than you with at least seven years. She never thought it. Because I come in with jeans, with sneakers like Pimo. You know, and I'll be bouncing. And I'll be telling them, guys, you know what? So she thought. So I said to her, I've showed you respect. But today, I killed the beast. Let me tell you, and I was speaking by the spirit. I didn't know this. I didn't read it. You are not my widow because you are not a member of my church. The church, yes, the pastors take care of widows. Then I said to her, secondly, suddenly Anna stood in front of me. And you know Anna is a book. Anna is not a person. It's a teaching. So when you leave, you will see Jeremiah and he will come to you because he wants you to talk. And that's what he did with Daniel. It was Jeremiah that came and Daniel said, I understood by books. The parchment is a standing up. Every spirit is, I mean, every scripture because scriptures are spirits. They visit. Blessed are you when you know their time and you catch them and pipe them down to earth. So I said to her, as I was reading Anna, I said a widow is actually an office in church. The early church didn't treat widows. It's not English. Oh, her husband died. Oh, his wife died. So he's a widow. Because I was almost dying. Because they sold me a lie. They said every man that cannot take care of his house is worse than an infidel. But okay, when I finish this teaching now and I close, you'll be the happiest man. You will tell your wife, oh yeah, take me out for dinner. And pay for it in full. Not from our money, but from your own. Because that's what he taught me. Many men, men die faster than women. You know why? Tolu, come. Drop your mic. Quickly, quickly. Come. Now be scratching me like you are eating ice cream. Be eating. That's how many women kill their husbands. They chew the man till he dies. Because of that scripture, any man who cannot take care of his house is worse than what? Be chopping. John Koku. Do you understand? It's wrong. Paul was not teaching about marriage. Paul was teaching about the office of a widow in the local assembly. He says, if a woman loses her husband and he dies, she is not the responsibility of the church, the pastor. That's what Paul was saying. He said it categorically. Go and read it. He was teaching Timothy and all the young boys, the pastors. He said, if she has a family, and a family has a head, let them take care of her. 
He says, because if you admit her, Lara, into widowhood, and she is young, when body moves and she falls, she will bring the entire house to disrepute. Pimo, put this and go and cross-check it. If it doesn't tally, remove it from your code. But if it tallies, sir, establish it as a canon of your church. Do you understand that? He says, if she's an older widow, and she has washed the feet of the apostles and served the saints, then invite her into widowhood. That means the church will now be responsible for taking care of her. But not taking care of her just to give her money to feed. What if the widow is well endowed? Elisha said to the widow, what can I do for you? She said, hey, don't worry. I know my way around the army. I know my way around the government. Which means she's well established. She said, I just perceive you are a genuine man of God. Oh, we are going to end this meeting this evening on an explosive note. Just watch and see. And she built him, turned her loft into a penthouse and told him, you sit there, have oversight over our home. Are you following me? <laughs> I'm excited. Are you? I'm giving you one canon for your church so that you can establish that as a law. If you have lawyers, they will draft it properly in your church. So you, you list, very soon you soon have 300 canons that were enacted. Yeah. And you can even sue people who break that canon. You know, your lawyers will represent you. They look at that wicked man. He stayed in our community. He swore to these things and he has violated it. Like recalcitrant pastors who want to mess you up. Finish them before they mess you up. I didn't used to go to court. Then God gave me a friend and a brother. He goes to court every week. He sued Lagos State Government. It's not his land. Lagos State said he violated the plot of the land. He sued them. <laughs> they came and put X. He continued building. In this Lagos, my friend likes trouble. Edo and Delta people. <laughs> they cannot make heaven. Here are their number. You know we're in trouble in this church. No coup can succeed in any country until Edo people are inside. Even when I saw migrants entering America uh, from Mexico, I saw Edo people. I said, Aikbe! What are you doing? Are you a Mexican? Honestly, they moved to Mexico and crossed the border. They too, they are Hispanics. They are going to America for Joe Biden. When you see a boatload of people that drowned around Libya, you see Edo and Delta. Yobosa. <laughs> they are all inside there. And when you're asking them, where are you from? They'll tell you, Algeria. <laughs> Edo can be anything in this world. I love them. I almost married an Edo girl. Remove it from the video. And let mommy hear it. So I now imagine how we would have been waking up in the morning. When I wake up, I say, okay, there's no breakfast. She would just break bottle. I say, what did you say? <laughs> then me too, I was smashed too. <laughs> so God spared me. <laughs> because I would never have married anything correct. God had to sort out my spiritual destiny before he started sending people to my life. You are blessed if you are born again. You know? uh, my uncle had a, had a wife, his last wife. He will go and get drunk. Our people drink burkutu, palm wine, and rum. We have honey, so we make rum. So he will drink from night till night. Then he will return home around 5 a.m. His wife just returned around four. Then he will go and touch her. He will say, Cat quiet. Didn't you cook something and remain for me? Then she will get up. Are you not a human being? She's, see how I'm standing. That's how she's shaking on her legs. Are you not a human being? Don't you have hands? How come you didn't cook and remain some for me too? <laughs> 
Then you tell her, Shege, you are useless. You're... Then she say, it's your mother. Then they will start fighting 5 a.m. until we come out and separate them. That's my, my uncle. That's what I was going to marry. Until Jesus saved me first. You need to thank him for me. I will collect an offering for you, from you for my life. Today. What was I saying? Eh? So the widow... Did you, did you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, a widow is not somebody that lost their husband and is now helpless. Some widows can sponsor a whole ministry from beginning to finish. In fact, let me tell you, some of the greatest ministries you know about in the world, they were raised on the treasure that people who were dying bequeathed to the ministry. You don't know giving. One man right now has given the church global, Lara, 700 million US dollars. He gave it in Amsterdam so that the gospel can be translated to the last remaining 200 plus languages. One man is a billionaire, Matthew something something from America. You belong to the category of those who in the last days men will be lovers of themselves. That's where you belong. One million enter your pocket, you are thinking of keeping 800,000, giving the church 50,000, giving pastor 10,000, and then acting like you gave. It didn't pinch you. Every photographic session they invite you is yours because God wants us to improve the office so that people can be coming to take pictures here. No, God doesn't care about photography. If you're an ambassador, he should have met your needs already before he sent you to Cameroon to be his ambassador. And when you're in Cameroon, if war breaks out between Nigeria and Cameroon, Cameroonians dare not touch you. Your bills are paid for. I'm a man whose bills are paid for. No soldier goes to war at his own. Didn't you hear that? No matter how poor the country is, they pay for their war. <laughs> Why wouldn't they pay for your own wars and battles? What's different about you? I can never be stranded. I have never been since I met Jesus. It's not possible. It's not. So a widow, Pastor Mo, is an admission. Come, what's your name again, darling? Tell me now. Shout it. Zena. Yeah, shout it. Zena. Yeah. She already married. There's no shame anymore. So who could say the thing? <laughs> yeah, Zena. Yes. So, widowhood is an admission. Pimo takes you in and says, I admit you today into widowhood and writes your name on a register. You are part of the church budget. Which means, we have not seen Zena since morning. Lara, go there. ID, where are you? You guys converge. Do you understand me? Because she's a kingdom asset. Oh no, you didn't get that. Yeah. What was Anna doing for 84 years? Praying. Where? In the, not outside, inside. That is why she met the Lord. Who told her, these hands will hold Every prophetic word I have spoken. And you will feel it physically. You will know its texture. You can smell it. You can taste it. Oh my gosh. We're talking about the finishing generation. The final finishing generation. Or the last finishing generation. Or the finishing finishing generation. So they've been killing us. And you've heard the stories, you know, Boko Haram killing us, killing. Are we dead? Because the sons of light will always be free. They will always be free till the end of time. And I was defying cancer. 
And then they told me that, Mommy, that's all she listened to for 24 hours, for two weeks before she went home. And every time it is playing, she'll just go, mm, 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 in the midst of pain. Without the song, you can't talk to her. Her systems just go ballistic. But once the song is playing, and I just had a box guitar. Chintox people were walking into my office, and I looked at their legs, and I said, ah, I feel like blessing you guys. They said to me, you know, you're our grandpa. Let's greet you bye-bye before we leave. So I said, I have a gift for you. And I began to sing it straight there. I was just hearing heaven. I don't write songs. That's my business. I just hear what they are singing with the melody, the symphony, the harmonies, everything. And I, I see, I don't even have to play my guitar. I just look at the guitar and I can see the chord progression that will produce the song. Walking with Jesus, the easiest life. You don't have to do anything. Just hang out with him. You can't praise him now until he tells you what to say. He shut up Moses inside a stone and then he declared, the Lord, the Lord. Slow to anger. He was giving Moses the words with which to praise him. I'm not a poet. And neither am I a historian. I'm not a political scientist. I'm not. I'm just a child of Jesus. Do you get what I'm saying? We will be discussing the same thing of Eba and soup and water. And when I start to talk, you'll be wondering, is it not the same discussion we were having now? It's nothing natural. So a widow is an admission. If we admit you into the office of a widow, we can trust you. That if this ministry is in trouble, everything you and your husband raised, you can put it at our disposal. To make sure that the ministry crosses the river. That's where a widow is. It's an office. A widow is an ultimate sacrifice. Even pastors don't give like widows do. A widow is an asset. If you have two widows, you don't need, you don't need associate pastors. Send her to a combo. She will go there and buy what she want. And even save money for you. And bring the change intact. You don't preach to widows. They are given. So I told that Ghana woman, first, you are not my widow because you are not even a member of my church. I have been kind to you, but you have been provoking me. But today the Lord showed me why I accommodated you. He has used you to teach me the word. So they said, if she be a widow, let her family Take care of her, so hold her. No, 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 no. You are the widow now, so you, uh -huh. you will know your husband will not die. Uh, hold her. Yeah. He said, if she has a family, let them take care of her. So pastor's ministry is not taking care of widows. Don't waste your time. He says, for if a man cannot take care of his household, he is worse than what? An infidel. This is not a teaching about marriage. Some of you, the moment you make a little money, nobody hears from you from home again. You go and find a house in Banana Island at Banana Republic behind the petrol station, inside the... Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't like people who don't talk about their families. You know how people come to church? I don't have anybody in this Lagos and in this life. Actually, I've been on my own since I was four. You are a liar. <laughs> Can you be on your own since you were four? Do you, do you even know how you look? Do you, do, you, do you know what four means? Do you understand? It's the day they are leaving you and abusing you and they have divided your church into four. It's when they are leaving, you will see their mother at the bus stop. Helping them carry the luggage they have acquired when they were with you. Say, but, but, but he does not have. So if you try to paint your picture for me, that is when I tell you, thank you very much. This is not a philanthropic source. I go to social welfare. They will help you locate your clan. <laughs> Church doesn't do that. I teach the word of God. 
it is to this man that that scripture was written. And you know, I came to a season in my life, Eva. My wife fed us for two years. Me, I was just reading the Bible. The Lord said, go to Kaduna, wait for me. And be studying till I come. And he didn't come for two years. <laughs> One day I lay down on the bed. I told him, are you not God? Drop your hands through the ceiling and castrate me so that I know I'm a new creature. <laughs> because I'm not a man. Neither am I a woman. <laughs> the Bible says that he that is not able to take care of his house is worse than an infidel. And the Lord laughed at me and didn't answer me. He waited for a couple of years before the moment came for him to explain it to me. Any wife that cannot take care of a man because he's out of work or his business has collapsed and has is running, she's the infidel. Because when I said to the Lord, why will my wife be feeding me and my son? And you're not upset. Everybody thought differently. My father told me, even if it's nursery school, go and walk. <laughs> I know you are intelligent, you are educated. I know you have heard the wrong teachers. By the grace of God, before Adam got a wife, God gave him a work. If you don't have a work, you have no business marrying. Oh, dear. Abraham didn't have a walk. He was trucking. When I was a drug addict, I had a bag. On the bag, the bag was, we sewed it with jeans. I wrote on the bag, keep on trucking. It was the Sex Pistols that sang that song. So when you see me from behind, you just be saying, keep on trucking. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what Abraham was doing, trucking. You know, the Bible annoys me. Numbers chapter 9. Go, go sit down, please. I need you to hear this, and then I'll close. You, you guys, you need to be standing a very nonsense. In church, they stand from morning till night. As I'm standing, they are standing. Then when we go outside, they want to pretend that they are a jebo. Nonsense. What's good for the goose? Do you understand me? <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? What, what did I say? Let me, I was going to tell you. Numbers 9. Do you know what they said in Numbers 9? After the tabernacle was set, the cloud of glory came down. In the afternoon, it was a cloud. In the night, it became like a fire. Same thing is the angel of the Lord. He looked like a cloud in the afternoon, giving them shade from the sun. In the night, he became a ball of fire, giving them heat and light. Now, hear what they said. Elvis, come. Hear what they said. About the cloud. So, moves up. Stop, stop there. So it was always the cloud covered by day and the appearance of fire by night. Next verse. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, the... <laughs> please read it for me. So once the cloud moves, Elvis moved one step, the children of Israel too traveled. The next verse. Adi. So commandment, Lara, is not a word. Attention is the movement of the cloud. Oh my goodness. At the commandment, what happened? And at the... So the commandment of the Lord is when the cloud moves and when the cloud stops. Uh -huh. As long as the cloud did what? Abode upon the tabernacle. What did they do? They rested where? Oh, Lara, you don't understand that. Come, Lara. Hold your things and hold everything there plus that bag. Everything. Those books carry them. Steal a uh, phone. Everything carry because that's what a woman looks like. So come, come, come and turn around. She's loaded. When the cloud stopped, they stopped in inside their tent. When the cloud moved, 
they gathered their tent and followed the cloud. So move, sir. Follow the cloud. Then stop, sir. Stop. So what will you do, Lara? You will begin to open your tents, knocking down pegs, putting carpet, preparing mattress, offloading donkey and cow. Then cloud begin to move. Then you have to gather all those things and follow him. Let me ask you, Eva, how many times will the cloud move before you call your husband for a meeting? <laughs> no, did you get that? No, 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 read it now. The next verse, verse one. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle, many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. Next verse. And so it was, when the cloud was a, you have to offload and build your tent if it stayed for a few days. According to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents. And according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. The next verse. And so it was, when the cloud abode from evening. And many of us have thought that those Israelites were stupid. Well, I cannot do it. Even me. I will call the Holy Spirit for a meeting. <laughs> so, you know, what did we teach about leadership? It was nonsense. I've never read a leadership book. I've not been able to finish one. Because I knew it was nonsense from my experience. Leadership is not you having the blueprint of God so that you can tell everybody, yeah, we are moving in two hours. Do, do you understand me? And then you'll be in charge. No. If you asked Moses in the wilderness, when are we moving? I have a special breed of okra that grows in three weeks so that I can plant it now. At least we can be eating okra and augmenting because we like helping God. And that's the real problem. That's what you've been talking about, all of you. Do you understand me? Moses would have told you, I don't know. And God called him the meekest man on earth because he didn't know, honestly. If you ask Moses, we're at Kadesh, where are we moving to next? What will he tell you? Because when the cloud abode, Moses remained. When the cloud moved, Moses moved. And that's leadership. When you don't know, but God knows everything. Come, come, Joseph. You are Joseph, Lara, come. Joseph, is it true that the spirit of the God, that, uh, is it true that you are full of wisdom and you know everything and you can explain this? Joseph said what? There is a God. Sit down. And that was the glory of Joseph. Daniel, come, come. Is it true that you can interpret dreams? He said, okay. <laughs> but I know... That's, that's really your ministry, to just say, he says, so give me some days, me and my friends, Misha, Shadrach, and Abednego, we are gang. We're a spiritual gang. Oh, oh, no, my God. Did you get that? Tonight, sit down, sir. Some of you have heard him say to you, because if you have never shut down anything for God, sir, you have not started. If you go read Deuteronomy, he said, Lord bless your storehouse. The Lord bless your basket. The Lord bless. So, what is the storehouse? Which one is the basket? Which one is. The... I sat with him. I asked him. When she was sharing her testimony of their giving with her husband, that's the prompting the Spirit was giving. Some of us were hearing instructions shut down and put into the work. A pastor does not get up to say we have a need. It's an insult. If there are three members, one of them is a widow, the church can never lack. Because he said, bring into the storehouse so that my house will have flour and oil. Do you understand me? And corn. You get comfortable with giving one key. Per service. I don't want to tell you my stories about givings. But tonight, some of you heard. See, my daughter is going back to school. She should have gone last week. <laughs> There's no savings for her ticket. 
her school fees or her accommodation in England. I don't say it for rubbish. I'm an ambassador. If my king forgot, then let them stay at home. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not lying. In fact, I don't come to preach so that I, I told him already that I'm not coming tomorrow morning. I told God oh, because I don't need to speak three times for you to hear what he's saying. If I speak three times before you understand, then I've, I've lost him. Nobody met Jesus twice. Those are vows you need to enter. I was here in Raymond Joko when I told him, nobody has to meet me twice. Everybody that met Jesus once, that's the kind of church I came to live for you. A church that is a razor blade. When you touch it, you don't even have to move. When you come off, you are bleeding already. That's what's called impact. It's not number of people. I'm going to lead you in an offering tonight. I don't do offerings. You have never seen me take an offering since your days that you knew me. I don't do that. I don't waste my time. But if I don't teach you, you will not enter into the dimensions that bring out the finishing generation. What are you going to close down tonight? Go and read it in Deuteronomy. The Lord bless you in the city, bless you outside the city. The Lord bless you in the highways. The Lord bless you in the byways. The Lord bless your basket. The Lord bless your savings. The Lord bless your barns. What's the difference between your basket, your barn? The... There are days when you are sitting down and he says, I, I want something. <laughs> you know, before he asked you to give, he had given. And he gave so that there will be bread and wine. The, the table of the Lord is never dry. His sacrifice is everlasting and eternal. It's those two dimensions complete. In the New Testament, everything in the old is fulfilled. And today we are in that season when everything is being fulfilled. Now some of you heard it. And now you are getting confirmation. Some of you felt a restlessness and you didn't know what it was. God was demand, demanding that you give something. And he says, shutting down. I have shut down my purses too many times. Too many times. One day, we, we were recovering with my wife because I told you we were separated for three and a half years. So we were coming back together. And... My money finished, so I went to Kaduna and I took a loan from her of 27,000 naira to come and revive my business. And I was going to Raymond Joku. When I passed by Kefi, I saw a red cross. I saw a banner. One of my friends from the north was coming to preach. And the guy was on fire, you know, anointing, movement. So I said, ah, let me go and thank God in this service. As I was going, I remembered, eh? The guy is a master at cleaning pockets. <laughs> His strongest move of the spirit is profiling money out of your pocket. I said to God, no, I'm not going. But I couldn't turn off. I just needed a service where I can go and bless God. And Lara, guess what I did? When I got to the place, I opened my boot. The tire of my car is the kind of tire that they sewed blanket into the tire. So when you are in the car, this, you'll be dancing as you are going. So we called it Akiti Joe. <laughs> so I removed 22,000 and I put it inside the tire. Because the car doesn't have a lock. Everywhere is wire. You can't tear jeans. <laughs> Do you understand me? So, and there are area boys there. And when they see me, you hear them, yeah, Baba, now I'm a scorpion day. No worry, nobody will touch your moto. I know they will tell us now, say the moto kuku no get lock. They were laughing. They knew me very well. So I now put the remaining 5K inside a small bag and I carried it in. As I entered and sat down, I just saw him on the stage. He, they sat, they put a chair for him and his legs were shaking. 
And then one of his spiritual sons from Okoko Michael came out and was massaging the leg for him. I said, yeah, the anointing is here. <laughs> and I heard him say, I know the money that is in the purse that you are not bringing. And it's the Lord that needs it. It is actually your daughter's school fees. It is in pounds, in 100, 100, 100 pound notes, 50, 50, 50, 50 20, 20, 20. He was calling the denominations. Then I heard a girl, ah, from behind. She was bringing it. And her mother too was crying from the other side. They were coming. <laughs> and they came and gave the Lord. If it does not cost you anything, it cannot move God. <laughs> I said that. I told the Lord. I said, you see what I told you? And I was at the back. He couldn't see me. It was Pastor Wale. I did for this meeting. Because that was my church. And he said, <laughs> I said, Father, he has already picked me out. <laughs> you left the greater in the car and you came on with the less. <laughs> I said, no, it's not my money. I borrowed it. It's a loan. I'm telling you. He said it. I told the Lord, I said, okay, me and you know that this guy is a rascal. But this was after a long time. The guy was going, then he would say other people, then he would come back to that case again. That you left the larger portion outside and you came with the lesser. God wants both. So I said to God, I would rather err on the side of caution with my relationship with you. So I called one usher. I'd gone outside, put the money in an envelope, big envelope. Then I, I put it in the basket with the usher. I said, take it to the front. I left that place penniless. My wife doesn't know how I have not been able to pay back the money because the whole loan was collected. Yeah, he collected the money. But then the Lord gave us an eternal heritage. You see, the church is for fools. It's not for smart people. If you think it, Allah, you finish. You have to be brainless to follow God. Then you will do foolish things, but you will burst into the reality of the spirit. Then you'll know how he said, sir, Pimo, how many did he call when he called you? Where were any of these people there? So come and see what he said. Come, sir. Let's take a walk. He said, see my servant, Abraham, Pimo, whom I called alone. That's his boast. Without his wife, without any of you, with no guarantees. I called him how? Alone. And then I blessed him how? Alone. Multiplied him how? Alone. Increased him how? Alone. So that the glory will be mine. Now, come back again. Let's act the drama. I finished too. See. Consider my servant Jacob. I found him in a howling wilderness. And as an eagle spreaded her wings and fluttered it and scattered her nest, he scattered his nest. He says he brought him. Then consider what he said of David. Psalm 107. Oh give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. And his mercies endure forever. He says for those of us. Who were wandering in the desert. Come on sir. Without a home of our own. Are you following me? We cried to the Lord. He heard us and delivered us from our infirmities. And he has brought us to a safe haven, a lagoon. You are here beside the water, isn't it? This is the very same water in which he called me to go back home. <laughs> so when I come to Lagos, I normally stay either at Radisson Blue, the Protea there, the Oriental there. Because when I look at the waters, I'm remembering and rehearsing where I came from. So if I'm already missing it, I tell myself, all right, I adjust. Because you are alone, he has blessed you, multiplied you, 
increased you, surrounded you with favor and grace. You will do exploits because you have been alone. So the number of people in an ex uh, uh, auditorium is not what moves you. You are moved by the spirit. So your being alone is his opportunity. He never calls people together. He even told Abraham, just take only Sare. Don't take anything that belongs to anybody. So, which means, even if your father is God, don't lean on what he has to go forward. That's how he calls people. Men and women. Boys and adults. Tonight, if you are one of the people I spoke about, and you know God has showed, showed you what to shut down, that girl and her mother shut down her school fees. The girl was going to England. She had 2,000 pounds and some loose change on top and a few naira in the purse. The man of God took everything. Sir, if a man of God dupes you, he has not done anything against you. He did it in the name of the Lord. Did you, did you understand that? The sons of Eli were stealing. They were stealing. God didn't instantly kill them. They stole from people successfully. Until God found a replacement, Samuel. Even Jesus said, those who sit in the seat of Moses, what they tell you to do, do what? Do it. But don't live like them. They live. I came, and this is the last thing I'll do, sir. Just, I, I'm doing this. If, if you know God said something to you. We already sang Leave Am So yesterday. Don't interfere. And you know that there is a bright, brand new day. But it is tied to a giving. It might be school fees. It might be a purse. It might be a rent. It might be whatever it is. Things you have planned. <laughs> I live there. And I'm not saying this so that you give me money. No, no. Your pastor has invited me, so it's his responsibility to take care of me. And I don't need much. In fact, I'm married to a very cheap wife. When I travel anywhere, all my wife wants is chocolate. Nothing. You see how, how big she is. Even if she, if, I was, if she was to desire cloth, two yards, three yards, they would build booba for her. She doesn't trouble me. I can handle her. See, see, my associate pastor, look at him. He's the thinnest man in the church. I used to laugh at them. I tell them there are two different churches in this church. There's the Orobo church. And there's the Pastor Fast church. Do you understand? I'm, I'm cutting a covenant with you and God. You must say, I have tasted of the world, sweet powers of the age to come. Now faith, now faith is arising, Lord, I believe. What is he asking you to do? Cut a covenant with him. Shed blood. Without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. You cannot depart from the past like that. He said, okay, how many times should I do it? They cheated me in church one, church two, church three. He wants you to even change your mind. They didn't cheat you. You are walking with God. The knowledge of the holy will burst out upon you. Try him and see. I'm going to wait for you. If you know that you made that arrangement with him, get up on your feet. I don't have to know what it is you're doing. You did. I'm telling you, Get up on your feet. You know what it is. If faith is rising inside of you. You know what it is. And let me tell you the truth. God doesn't take money from you to give you money. He says, Eva told us. What will he give you? The spirit. <laughs> That's what I have. It's my only asset. The spirit. If you have heard me and you believe this is authentic. Is the spirit. There are musicians everywhere in Lagos when I came. But 
I charted a course that people have not walked. I remember singing, Yahweh, Yahweh. And then people were looking at me like, who is this smoky fellow coming from the wilderness? I introduced nomenclature in the world of worship effortlessly. First time I went to Kano, I was in El Dorado Cinema. My voice had gone. It was Hamatan. It, my throat was cracked in 10 million directions. I couldn't speak. I told God, you will just disgrace yourself today. Because all the Pentecostal churches in Kano gathered there. And they said they have a guest from Kaduna. And I was sitting down when the pastor was saying, God didn't just send us a man of God. He sent us a worshiper, a prophet, and an apostle. And I was telling the Lord, hey, yeah, you disgrace yourself. Because I didn't have a voice. I licked Tom Tom. They warmed orange juice for me to drink. The voice didn't change. Then just when they were saying, please receive with Jesus joy, our brother from Kaduna, Chris Delvan, I was standing up. Then the Lord said to me, chant. And I said, what, what is that? See, I read religion from earliest times to 1750. So I was a practicing Buddhist sometimes. There's nothing I didn't practice. Every time we want to smoke something new, we will find a religious something to tie to it. So I told the Lord, it's only Buddhists that chant. Then he asked me, where did the devil get it? The devil is not a creative being. He heard it on Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. Before I came, nobody had ever had the audacity to chant. Church couldn't even accept Panam singing, No, Jesus, no life. Will they accept a chant? <laughs> If you want to, I saw a future in which my head was flint. Hey, walked in places where angels do not dare to tread. I see the things that you are doing. He's attempting to do church. Unusual. Different from what people normally do. It doesn't just happen like that. I'm telling you. I can smell your savor. Oh, 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 many of you here heard it from your campuses, your secondary schools. I was in Ghana. They were introducing me. I thought I was being introduced to this big, great ministry. Taiwo Dukoya had introduced me to them before he passed. And when they were telling them, Pastor, they, Pastor, they lay down on the floor. He said, I was listening to you since when I was 15. So I realized that I was not a stranger. That day I came to the restaurant to meet you. Yeah, yeah. I ran away. There was no need. When they told some, they were flying, running. Pa which pastor? Chris? What, which? They were introducing me by songs. Do you want to walk in the unusual? Brand new. Breaking shells. You know, every chick breaks her egg. A mother doesn't free her chicks. Because the act of breaking the shell is what makes the chick have muscle, develop muscle. And she will need that muscle throughout her life, pecking the ground. If you are standing up with me, come on. I've been doing this. This is the second church now where I'm sowing seed. <laughs> Come on. Hum it. I don't care what you are seeing. If what you are seeing is a refinery, the kind ten times bigger than the kind Dangote is building. If you are seeing just a barber's shop, it's your business. I don't. I'm initiating a walk with you. Hey. Spread out that way. There are more people coming. Some of you want to depart from a past. 
I'm talking of family and I'm talking of dispositions. You know that there's a disposition around me. It's what you want to end. I'm like you. I was your brother. Abraham used to make shrines and idols for people to worship. He needed a departure from it. They told him, bring your son, your only son, Sarah's son. <laughs> he told the servants, he said, me and the lad will go yonder and we'll worship God and we will return. But he knew who was to be the sacrifice. Why was he so sure that they will return? Take this step. And then don't take it and sit down. Take it and make the reading of the word of God your life. That insanity. That epileptic fit. Because there are some of you standing here. You forget things. It's an epilepsy. And it's generational. Every disposition that disposes you to the earth is cancelled. I've said many things. Lift up your right hand. Put a brand new song in their mouth. Say ha 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 ha. brings stress competing with people comparing yourself with people it brings stress and you dry up tonight all your stress is coming to an end because your seeking has ended you are at the well and there is a well sitting on your well his name is Jesus you will soon lose the taste for the water that brought you you will drop your pot and go and look for men because men are vessels. God wants to fill. Empty cities plant new cities. When you enter a place to work from now, make sure you appoint people and put them in strategic places so that long after you are gone, they will represent the kingdom. Never walk anywhere anymore where you cannot return to with influence. Except your righteousness exceed that of the Pharisees and the Gentiles. They are rubbish. IBB is out of power how many years? He's dying and finished. But every government, he can call the shots. Make your influence to outlast you. You hear me? Don't be greedy. Kill self. Disenfranchise him. He can work in other lives, but not in your life. Let them renew your life and turn it inside out and upside down. They will give you the right model. I bless these hands that are lifted. They will never go down. And don't compromise your giving. You heard the sound of the figures. You heard the sound of which particular project to sink. Sink it and see if God is God dare to be like me I was the president of the ministry it was my 60th birthday I didn't have a car that I bought didn't have a house that I built and I can't forget the day my son stood up took the mic and said we want to show you guys something he said well, you know one thing we've known about our father is when you give him money he goes into the ministry completely so we refused to give him money. We refused to buy him a car because he would sow it. That's all he does, sowing every day. So we built a house and on the screen there was a house there up to its lintels. And they said, that's the house we're building for our father. People were watching all over the world and they began to send texts. Ah, it's for Pastor Chris Delvan. We need to sow money. We need to sow money. 
We have never successfully blessed him. You need to have a reputation. Let them know you, you are for God. And if God be true, then let every man be a liar. If you are the first person, God will fail. Then establish that as a landmark. In my life, you failed. Hmm? Dare him now. It's the word of God. If you seek your life to gain it, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you will gain it. I'm staking my ministry and reputation on it. We're not even that friendly for Pimo to tell me to raise an offering for him. We have not discussed since I came. He has not been near me. Ua and the others, they are the ones that have been with me. They've not told me there's any need and I'm not responding to need. The only need I'm responding to is your cry, the cry of your heart. I'm plugging you to God. You hear me, sir? Plugging you to my God. Jesus, that's his name. My God. Thank you, pastor. Thank you. Just bless him with me. Open up your two hands and tell him thank you. Thank you, pastor. For these sacrifices. Reap them. Take their step of faith. Use it as a knife for circumcision. Deep incisions. Let blood flow. And make for yourself a great name. And a great reputation. Out of it, let fresh praise arise. New wine, fresh oil. Squeeze it out here. Until the grapes are broken and crushed. Juice cannot flow. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Now we know you. And because they've taken this step, circumcise their ears. Let them hear your voice clearly. So from now, they will not be in the dark concerning what you are doing. I was praying for you since yesterday. I don't, I don't, don't know you. And I was praying for you. Uh, these hands will rot the works of God. The works of God. I heard, I heard Edom say that we must all conquer social media and sexual sin and all of that. And, and I don't know, I just, just lifted you up. You hear me? Another dimension of authority comes to you. Comes to you. All of you, the scepter will not depart from your house. And the lawgiver from between your feet until Shiloh comes. I saw you in prayer and I told you already what I had to say. Fold your hands. I, I told Sam today, I said there was a gentleman sitting beside you. The Lord blessed you, even as he has blessed you. So, 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 so I want you to write whatever you have and we'll take a worship song from the worship team and then you will come when you've written it and write your name and just come and drop it in the basket. Then go off. Spend the remaining part of your life reading the word of God. Attempting to know God. Then watch, watch him take you across the Jordan. Watch him take you across the Red Sea. Watch him take you across the well at Samaria. Watch him take you into the commonwealth of Israel. You hear me? I'm talking to you. Yeah, don't be ashamed. Please return to your seats and do what I asked you to do. We should be done with that in five, six, seven minutes. Pimo. I'm sorry I ruptured your, your service completely. Now stretch your right hand at me. Stretch it from wherever you are. And receive a button. Yesterday I gave you access, mantles. So receive it now. Whole nation, sir. They are coming to the brightness of your dawn. The Lord bless you, man of God. I love you in my heart. Ah.